What is up Flutter devs? Today in our continuing port of processing to Flutter, we're gonna do a few things that some of you have requested in the comments. We're gonna make a small correction to a test, we're gonna make a small improvement to the change log, and then we're gonna get into this nightmare known as null safety or non-null by default NNBD. Let's get into it. First, let's make a little correction. It was pointed out by Peter in the YouTube comments that this test here should be centered, not offset. So it's slightly off center, it should be centered. That's this test here where we have 56 and 46 and both of these should be 50. 50 for that one and 50 for that one. Now this, let's see, there were two circles in there. And so the one with the radius of 30 is fine. I don't know, let's see what this gives us here. Let's say flutter test, update goldens, plain name, and this one is ellipse example two. All right, now they're both centered. Uh, so I didn't closely read what else was in this test, but the offset was wrong. Now the offset is correct. Thank you, Peter, for pointing that out. And now that's no longer a problem. Then uh, Osaksma, and I have, sorry, I have no idea if that's your name or a handle or an acronym or anything else. And I have no idea how badly I just butchered it. But uh, he said uh, that it'd be nice if the change log had dates. So let's add dates to the change log. 010 was the very first non-functional version, which was released January 7th, 2021. And then 011 was just recently, I guess not so recent anymore, time is going very quickly, was March 2nd, 2021. And I will do my best to remember to put those dates in the change log moving forward from there. All right, let me go let me go commit those changes. Okay, with those changes committed, now we're going to do the real meat of today's video, which is migrating to null safety, also known as non-null by default, also known as NNBD. Here is a guide, dart.dev slash null safety slash migration guide. This tells you how to go from the way the world was to a world with null safety. Now there's a number of things here we don't really care about in our case, in terms of Dart version, I'm sure that I'm already on a, a recent enough version of Flutter and Dart. Update dependencies, I don't, let's see, what do we even have dependencies? No, we have golden toolkit for dev dependencies. We'll, we'll see if that breaks, I don't know. Uh, but we don't have any, any runtime dependencies. Now there's this migration tool uh, it, maybe it works great, maybe it doesn't, I haven't tried it, but I tend to find the tools in general, it gets like 90% right and the other 10% is mangled. Again, I don't know if that's the case here or not, but I'm just going to come down here to migrating by hand and we're just going to go line by line and make this happen. The only thing that really needs to change to kind of opt in to non-null by default or null safety is to change the SDK environment. So I'll copy these numbers. The point is you want to be on 212 or above. We'll come back here to the pub spec. Here's the environment right now. It's 27. We will change that to 212. I don't know how the flutter version will be impacted by this. I might have to remove that flutter uh, line entirely. Let's say flutter pub git. Well, I guess for now it thinks it's okay. But now let's open up core and notice all this red stuff here. This is what we need to go through 
and fix. Now the first fix is going to be pretty uh, pretty easy. I've been fairly religiously using this at required annotation. There, this annotation no longer has a purpose in the world of null safety. We just remove the at symbol, and now there's this word called required. This is no longer an annotation. This is a language term. The same way that void is a language term, required is now a language term. I'm going to undo that because what I'm going to do instead is say at required, and I'm going to replace it with required, and let's see, how do I match all of this? Maybe words. I don't know. Let's see what happens here. Replace all. Hopefully that worked. Now you'll notice a bunch of red here disappeared. That's a one for one replacement that's pretty easy to do. Anything that was at required with the annotation can just be language level required now. So with that change made, let's go from top to bottom and see what we need to do here. Up here at the top, we have our processing widget. We take in a key. A key is optional. In null safety, you need to explicitly say that something is optional. So we'll put a question mark there. That red squiggly is gone. Let's come down here. A sketch. We take in a setup function and a draw function. Setup is definitely optional. I think. Yeah, setup is optional. So in it, this question mark isn't, to be clear, it's not just about what you're passing in to something. Literally, the type of a thing itself is nullable or non-nullable. Literally, when we declare the setup variable, we are saying it is a function that might not exist. As opposed to draw, I think draw needs to always be there because if you're not passing in a draw function, then what are you passing in? I guess let me make sure, let me see if we, let me not get ahead of myself. I guess, I don't remember the rationale for this, but we actually treated draw as optional. This question mark here means that draw might not exist. For whatever reason, we said that I guess you don't have to pass in either of these. So I'm going to stick to that. I'm not going to change our earlier assumptions for right now. That means that draw is also a function that might not exist, hence a question mark which means that what's being passed in for draw might not be given, might not exist. We're going to put in the question mark. Now let's see what it's complaining about here. Non-nullable instance. Okay, so there are other things in here that need to be initialized. We'll deal with that when we get there. Canvas and size. Right now it's saying, oh, you don't have to worry about these being null because canvas is non-nullable but that's only because we haven't gotten to Canvas yet. So let's kind of skip this initialization stuff and keep moving down. Uh, so random seed, in the, this, based on when you're watching this, the previous video we implemented random seed and we explicitly said you need to be able to pass in null so that you can reset the seed. In terms of bounds, given that this second parameter is optional, then kind of by definition it is nullable. The first one is not nullable. You cannot pass null in for the first bound. Background requires a color. Fill requires a color. No fill has nothing. Stroke requires a color. No stroke takes nothing. Point. Definitely getting an X and a Y. There may not be a Z. Line. We're definitely getting two offsets. There may not be a third offset. Circle, we require a center and a diameter. Ellipse, we require an ellipse. Arc, we require an ellipse, start angle, end angle. Arc mode, it has a default value, which means either you provide it or we provide it, but it's always provided, therefore it is non-null. Coming down, square requires a square. Rect requires a rectangle. The border radius is optional. Okay, triangle, we require three points. Quad require four points. Okay, now we're down into the square class. I think everything looks okay there. Ellipse, some required stuff there. Arc mode, 
All right, sketch painter. Now that, so I had this assert, even though it was already required, I had this assert because I wanted to make double sure that a sketch was provided. Now that we have language level support for nullability, I can delete the assertion and we don't have to worry. Now we still have these complaints up here. Let's go see where Canvas is coming from. All right, here's where I, I guess I just glazed right over these the first time around. Here are some, uh, I guess, variables or properties, dependencies, whatever you want to call them, things that are required for painting and processing. The question is, are they always here or are they sometimes here? If they are always here, then they can be non-null. If they are only sometimes here, then they need to be nullable. The canvas, and let's just, let's go look where we actually set the canvas to be sure we know what we're talking about. Canvas is set in paint. So every time paint is called, we set a canvas and we set a size. Therefore, these things can change uh, and they are null until the first time this is run. Now, we might be able to get away with the late keyword. What that means is initially canvas is null. Then at some point it is not null. And once it is assigned, it, it always has a non-null value after that. We can see if our tests still run this way. I'm not sure if that's going to work quite right or not. In terms of the fill paint and stroke paint, let's go see where they are assigned. So they are assigned in do setup. Uh, that's the only place that fill paint is assigned, stroke paint. That's the only pa place that stroke paint is assigned. And this is done before setup. And we know that setup comes before draw. Therefore, these as well, I think, technically can be given the late keyword. That may, eventually, that may not be the right thing. Eventually, the, the late keyword might prove to be untrue, in which case we will need to make these nullable. But for now, they are non-null with a late initialization. Given that we figured out that they are non-nullable after the initialization, we can come back up here and we can remove these asserts because as unless we're violating unless we're violating the late keyword the asserts have no purpose because we once we assign canvas it always has a non null value so we'll save that let's go see if we have any complaints in the code for our tests This is complaining that we are using uh, an older version of Golden Toolkit. Let's see if there is a non-nullable version. It says null safety version 090. Let's go update from 08 to 09. And uh, you know, let's see if that breaks anything. Okay, I'm looking for, so that got rid of the warning. I'm now looking for, okay, we have an unused import there. Fine, we'll deal with that. I'm not seeing any red in any of the tests. How about test infra? Nope, okay. In that case, let's say flutter test, and let's see if we actually broke any of our golden tests or our random test. Great, all of our tests pass. That is all that it should take for our package to be migrated to null safety. Now, this example app has been complaining about things for a while, although I guess the complaint here is integration test. I don't know, there's something wrong with integration test. I'll deal with that later, but let's see if we have any complaints in here 
for main. This is just the normal generated app. I haven't touched the example app yet. We will in the near future. I don't see any complaints in there. This test right here shouldn't even exist. It's the one generated with the project. That's fine for example. With that, we now have, I believe, a null safe version uh, of Flutter processing. Now, I'm not going to issue a, a new release to the package right now because uh, we have some important updates coming up. I think probably in the next video, we're going to bring in animation and then we might do one or two actual processing kind of UI app examples where we will make use of the example app. And then maybe after those examples, we'll issue uh, a new release to maybe 0, 1, 1 or no, sorry, 0, 1, 2 or 0, 1, 1 plus 1. We'll have to go read the, uh, the guide for semantic versioning again to be sure. But I believe that we are now null safe. If I discover that I missed something, then we'll take care of that in a future video. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.